Hey guys, welcome back to It's It Sports. Thank you for stopping by for another video. And you know, I love to make uh, videos like this. And we are back with Tier Maker. And today's video is actually an important discussion on ISL clubs finance. As you know, many clubs are said to be going bankrupt because of, uh, you know, the spending of ISL clubs. The amount of money that they have to spend is not sustainable enough. Now, I will make a different video explaining in depth what my opinion is about the situation how do i feel about what is happening but in this video we are going to talk about the clubs okay i'm going to rank the clubs on the possibility of them getting uh bankrupt okay now mind you bankrupt is a very like you know i know it's a very scary word but uh once again these clubs like how pune city delhi dynamos went bankrupt basically uh they can be uh branched into new clubs possibly like how now hyderabad and odisha exist so it is possible like that but in today's video we are going to look at all the 11 isl clubs the current 11 isl clubs and my opinion on in the future let's say four five years what do i see uh their likeliness of you know losing all the money going in huge losses maybe selling the club also so without any further ado guys if you love this content like this i would like you to hit the subscribe button and also tell me your thoughts in the below which club you believe is going to go bankrupt so let's start now we'll go in order of each club so there are five levels the high highest is impossible which is highly unlikely it means it's not the club will never get bankrupt they have enough uh financial you know unless of course if they do the worst case this is they just start burning money then that's a thing but very unlikely with the way it's going on then we second have unlikely one uh which yes there is a chance of bankruptcy but you know maybe in another 20 30 years if they continuously overspend then the possible is like a medium tier like you know wrong decisions of course this club is going out okay highly possible is clubs that have to like be very sustainable uh that they if they do if they do a small mistakes and then this club is going to go bankrupt and definitely happening a club that are basically according to me uh will eventually end up bankrupt or will be playing horrible in the future because they'll have to sign players who play in the 8th division of the Nigerian uh, Football League. So uh, here, let's start. We have 5 tiers. So we have ATK Mohan Bagan first, which I'll put as impossible. Now ATK Mohan Bagan is... Uh, has going up money of course they say but on a fair point of new note the fact that uh the same owner owns a ipl club now uh gives a little more sustainability because in ipl of course there's obviously always profits even though no matter how much you spend there the income somehow always comes out to be higher and uh, the fact that he's a smart guy he knows how to handle a business, how to run sports clubs, which according to me is one important thing owners need to do. So I don't see ATK Moon Bagan, even though they spend a lot, but they generate also equal amount of revenue. They are always in the top of the, not obviously top, but in the tops of the league table, they have been playing the AFC Cup. Uh, they uh, mostly make it to the playoffs, even though they bottle it there. I see they have a lot of player value, you know, they know how to hype up stuff. Now, I always say that 8K Moonbagan signings are crap on the pitch, but they know how to hype the players. So this is why I strongly feel that they, even though they do make some horrible decisions in signings and they spend quite a bit, they know how to recover that money, which is a good thing. Now, Bengaluru, I'll put in the possible place. Now, Bengaluru is a big club, okay? They reached the finals of the AFC Cup. They have won the Duran Cup. They have won the Super Cup. They have won the I-League. They have won the IS. They basically won, I believe, everything that is uh, available for an Indian club at, uh, you know, the national level. So, uh, but the thing is that, uh, you know, how Bengaluru already had an issue about finance before, okay? And uh, then the season went by where they played exceptionally bad. But once again... Uh, uh, you, uh, proper decisions are being done by the club and uh, they are doing well at least for the moment in the Indian Super League they have been winning matches and the fact that they have got some amazing new uh, management uh, to work uh, apart from the football I see that this club has the possibility of going bankrupt but considering they have a full Bangalore as their support uh, makes it a very interesting case you know 
when it comes to them because they have tasted uh, the possibility of losing a lot of money heck their owner himself is one guy who talks about the possibility of uh, i mean the how much clubs lose so the fact that he has this much understanding and he knows then i see that this club ha- of course there is a possibility uh, it can go if uh, the league comes more competitive but overall i feel bangalore uh, nah not going to go bankrupt anytime soon considering uh, if they make proper decisions chennai in uh also i'll put them in the possible range the reason why i put chennai in also in the possible range is a kind of simple uh, thing to tell you at least uh, chennai in once again full tamil nadu uh, supports chennai in uh, so much that a cl- the ili club chennai city had to withdraw because they knew no one is going to support them <laughs> but uh, overall chennai chennai in know how to uh, once again uh, get their money done just like bangalore they have the fan support okay there's a lot of fan supports so they lot of revenue they earn from merch and all uh, selling tickets selling merchandise so there there is a place where they know they of course don't over hype their players like atk moon bagan when they do signings but they know how to uh, get revenue like they have won the isl twice before Uh, they have been a declining club they have not uh, they have been in the bottom they have uh, failed to qualify for the next stages that's because they are going more sustainable according to me they are not overspending on big signings they are not overspending on getting top quality players they are going more sustainable but the issue will come when uh, fi- money you know revenue sharing starts happening and i wonder what they are going to do that time so let's see how it goes then we have fc goa who oh, i'll put also in the possible realm because see fc goa once again or like all these three clubs full goa supports fc goa apart from me and a few other people uh, we do believe that tempo is the best uh, goa club uh, so uh, the thing is that fc goa have their fan base they can sell lot of tickets they can sell a lot of merchandise uh, they know how to uh, you know uh, do the marketing part of their club very well but the issue once again is the owners of fc goa who i do have an issue with uh, putting casino owners as your you know the main, giving casino owners the in charge of your club is kind of questionable which was a huge issue that played a role for me leaving fc goa at that time but uh, overall whatever the decision uh, they do i believe goa is very conservative they do extremely well in scouting they know to get the good players so they don't spend much on getting big signings uh, i think the most they have spent was for 40 lakhs that they played for Dylan Fox that was the highest spending they have ever done so it shows that FC Goa uh, know how much to spend and the fact that they make in the playoffs every time here now and then uh, gives them an advantage they only twice i believe in the entire history of ISL they have not made it to the playoffs uh, last season and the third season uh, so i think if, at least for the moment FC Goa uh, with the current decision yes they may not make it in the playoffs in the futures because uh, they may spend less but they know how to uh, and we have hyderabad okay and uh, highly possible now hyderabad have been uh, in in my defense hyderabad have been playing well okay but it's under only manolo masquez without him hyderabad were not even in the question of coming up to the league right so this is my issue with hyderabad see the thing is that manolo himself is helping this club okay without him and with the fact that he's going to join bangalore next season uh, this club is going to be out of competition for many football matches i see the main players of this club just being wiped out by the big uh, big clubs like mumbai city atk mohan bagan kerala blasters uh, bangalore also just signing players left right and then you come to the issue that bangalore uh, hyderabad do not have that strong of a ha- fan base that other clubs which are like bangalore chennai and goa have okay no offense to them their fan base is quite good but uh, not not in comparison with uh, the other three clubs that i just specified at the moment uh, they do well only be under manolo that's one of the issues so their replacement coach will have to be extremely well we have seen in jamshedpur situation how just uh, letting one of their coach leave owen koi leaving uh, the club is currently second bottom in the league okay so there's a lot of things to be desired so overall sustainability wise uh, they'll have to get huge signings okay to maintain their positions in such uh, you know to maintain their position in the top 6 possibly which i see them spending a lot and if they don't spend that much uh, i see clubs like shineri deccan uh, who are you know long time football clubs who have built fan bases overtaking them in the future in the isl pyramid or the indian football pyramid 
then we have jamshedpur who uh, i'll put again here in the possible now the beautiful part about jamshedpur is that they have about their investors the people who have invested or who are the owners of jamshedpur especially the two big investors tata steel and uh, state bank these two i think are enough to keep jamshedpur in the top uh, in the isl forever you know because jamshedpur don't do big signings once again i put this into note greg stewart was a gamble that time that they did which ended up well this season the coach is not that good and the gambles have not worked that well but overall this club is exceptionally well okay it's exceptionally good and uh, even though comparatively to fc goa bangalore and chennai their fan base isn't that big uh, i would say that the finance that they get the financial uh, support that they get from uh, their investors itself is strong enough for to keep this club for a long time in the league okay a long time and i mean a long see they are even second bottom at the moment but because there's no relegation i can see that it's a, not a issue but if there was relegation i swear that state bank and tata steel would have pumped up a lot of money to not allow them to end in the bottom of the table that is kind of obvious here now kerala blasters ha huh. yeah obviously unlikely so of course kerala blasters don't do have the biggest fan base so ticket sales merchandise sales uh, you know basically everything where fans play an important role uh, i see that working out for uh, kerala blasters overall comparatively to all the isl clubs financially speaking they are the best they are the best be- uh, best because they have a huge fan base which itself is enough for any uh, isl club uh, i mean club or in a general realm of speaking to work out well you know uh, it's it's a great thing that they do have uh, a good fan base which keeps the club well overall financial support wise of course compared to jamshedpur investors the investors are not that great uh, i would say but uh, they are decent enough once again this club is surviving because of the fans if they was if they had fans like even uh, hyderabad level i would have put them in a uh, highly possible were of a highly possible a bankruptcy but overall i feel uh, they they won't they won't get bankrupt it's not that bad of a situation for them kerala blasters uh, they do get of course uh, since it's a football crazy state like uh, they are they produce a lot of youth players who eventually end up playing well and then they can even sell them to uh, other clubs we can see how they did it for sanjeev stalin uh, they did for putia they sold many of their good players uh, which gives them even more revenue They, yes they may not be playing afc cup asian champions league and not winning any trophies but overall the fan base is the single thing that is keeping this club alive then we have mumbai city which of course comes in impossible range i know the current situation of manchester city that is going on but apart from that city football group is enough to finance entire mumbai city's uh uh budget you know uh spending expenses for i believe 10 years also uh without even you know considering the accounting mumbai city have uh, do play pay a lot of wages comparatively and they do sign a lot of players when it comes uh, to you know big players but you have to understand mumbai city even end up winning the asia uh, you know they win the end up winning trophies and they have played in the asian champions league also so they also revenue is considered and comparatively i know people say that mumbai city have the lowest fan base considering the stadium itself is small but the overall ticket sales the stadium is almost most more packed comparatively i know there's this 4000 5000 seats you may say and uh, filling 4500 out of 5000 seats is not a big deal but overall that is where uh, things come to a better health for uh, mumbai city and the fact that cfg i think itself is the best best answer for you city football group has helped us a lot they don't you we don't need to actually mumbai city don't need to take out money from their own pockets when it comes to scouting when it comes comes to finding possible players training and all because this is all what cfg provides them with so fine then we have northeast united and uh, it's a, it's a tough one but i'll put here as highly possible once again northeast united uh will only survive if they are carried by the fans this season itself has shown quite a huge uh, hole in northeast united how the owners currently are not investing well but apart from the fan base nothing else is going well for northeast united if the owners expel even themselves and let's say uh, it comes to normal situation i think the only way they can survive is through their fans uh, so yeah definitely bankruptcy could be an issue uh, but uh, if they can do some wise decisions okay they do have a huge fan base they have the full of northeast okay even though they are based in assam 
they have the full northeast uh, that support them so of course that's there and once again they have one uh, i would like to get again the topic that they do have the full of northeast so they can scout many young players and you know manipur mizoram uh, they produce quality players okay they can scout them put them in their youth system and then sell them for a profit they become that sort of a feeder club uh, the same way they had to sell apuya to mumbai city they become sort of that feeder club but in the end in the grand scheme of things i think overall it's a win situation for northeast because they will highly unlikely get bankrupt then we have odisha who are put in definitely happening now i don't know who pune city converted to did pune city become hyderabad or pune city became odisha i can't recollect for the moment but the reason why pune city went bankrupt was because they spent a huge amount of money in transfer fees i think out of the top 10 tra- uh, transfers uh, that happened in the indian super league when it comes to paying money okay i think four or five are held by pune city itself and pune city have been disbanded long time ago that shows how unsustainable their uh, style was of uh, purchasing players and it played a huge impact on them and they did of course have to face a uh, possible uh, sanctions i'm not sanctions as such they had been bankrupt and so the odisha situation is here is that no matter uh, odisha do have a lot of uh, priorities to towards sports okay which is a good thing i do believe the state of odisha does but comparatively they have the like the least fan base when it comes to social media engagement and all so uh, once again like northeast united they do not have uh, the you know fan base which they can rely on for some additional revenue and also considering again the fact that not many outstanding talents ke- uh, are found in odisha okay no offense but like manipur is obviously like the highest place where you get the best players okay so that doesn't work uh, work there in odisha uh, so yeah possibly they could file for bankruptcy unless if promotion relegation starts if relegation starts they are going to get relegated okay they will have to get relegated because they can't get the big signings of course diego bavicho is by far the only one who's playing well for them and i don't see that this is their, their system is sustainable for quite some time uh east bengal definitely Now East Bengal have two choices. Okay, they can either become a relegation club, uh, which I like to call it in the sense of relegation club means they are obviously fighting. They had end up bottom most of the time this season, even with proper investment from uh, getting proper investors this time, like Imani. They still cannot uh, make it in the top six. They are still uh, which position they are ninth, I believe. So here's the issue for East Bengal. Uh, they do not know how to s- sustain themselves in the indian super league uh, their forward signings are garbage okay their forward signings are garbage irrespective to which season you see uh, the tactics and all don't work up very well for them and i personally do not feel that unless uh, they get relegated which they go back to i league which i think will be more sustainable there for them but otherwise speaking east bengal are not surviving in the indian super league any time in the future with their current situation like they'll need a mastermind of a coach stefan constantine is not that mastermind and getting good signings of course will be a huge issue i know they have a fan base purpose supposed fan base because there's always that you know the old fan base only turns up for the derby matches uh, so i don't think he's been called overall has a good chance you know for uh, going through like that so let's see how it goes but uh, overall this is my opinion about which indian super league clubs have a possibility of getting uh, bankrupt okay of course atk mohan bagan and mumbai city have the huge financial advantage kerala blasters have the fan base advantage then the bengaluru chennai uh, and goa have the fan base and sort of some of the investment okay jamshedpur purely run on the fact that the investors are super rich uh, Hyderabad northeast as again can be exposed Hyderabad if Manolo Masquez goes they lose quite a lot of player uh, they lose quite a lot just like Jamshedpur they have lost this season northeast united once again the fan base is like the dying thing that will save them and the fact that they become a feeder club by exporting players selling players Odisha and East Bengal need to get proper investments and develop a proper fan base that's all i have to say so guys tell me your thoughts in the comments down below thank you so much for watching this video do like share subscribe see you on more videos coming soon in the near future goodbye take care stay safe